Welcome back to Who the Fuck Are These Guys? How are you, Mako Shark? Good, Matty C. I'm feeling very good this week. You're looking limber. Looking I'm looking loose fresh. And... You're looking fresh yourself. It's a big hit we've got coming I this flew week. flew up to Shell Harbour. Yeah, you look at Eddie's. Yeah, now yeah, I do no. a weekly flight. Got the quick bounce. But uh, look, episode 101. Yes. Can you believe this? We I are can. back bigger than ever this week. We've got a huge one. It's actually a massive one. We've got big guests this week, Matty. Big, <laughs> big, big guests. We they got... uh, could teach us a thing or two about uh, tact and or decorum from a, a radio and, and TV persona maker show. We've got Melissa Leong from yes. MasterChef and Dessert Masters. Mm. We've got Nick Cody of uh, Fox FM fame, stand-up our, comedian he's extraordinaire. Our Nick, he fits right in, and Melissa too, but like, he's, he's an outrageous fella. He's a good fella. We had a great <laughs> chat. We're going to get to it in a minute, mate. Yeah. We talked all things UFC 296 just happened yes. today. Flat Earther got flatlined. Bryce coming Mitchell, up. the Flat Earther got flatlined. We're we talking talked about uh, a little, was it a false twitch, real twitch? Talking all sorts of twitches. <laughs> we're talking convulsions. We're talking Ronda Rousey. We talk oh. about Conor McGregor leg snaps. We talk about Dabble coming off a live stream. We Shout out to the Dabble, Dabble crew Dabble. doing we a lot. We talk about Delgado. Cheering to that, mate. Gosh. It's been a big, big week. It's been big a big week. episode. Huge week. We're coming off the Volk. We're trying to give you... Bigger episodes. I think this one... We can't do much more, can we? we I don't think we can. can we're we just two men. No, we man can. with no hair, man with a lot of hair. I reckon no. we just let the pod do its talking. I like, think we don't talk in. too much. We don't yeah. waffle on too much. We get into it. we got, as I said, we got Melissa Leong. we yep. got Nick Cody. Yep. we got it all coming and it's happening right now. Who the fuck is? We are back this week with an extremely special episode this week. It is a hot off the press, Matthew, oh, UFC yes. 296 recap episode with none other than MasterChef Dessert Masters extraordinaire, Melissa yes. Leon, and host of the Mid-Flight Brawl and the stand-up comic Nick Cody. They're here Thank today you. in the studio. Yes. I'm very excited. Straight out the Nux, bar. Nux, Straight into who the, the fuck are these guys? Who the fuck are these guys? Thank you very oh, much man. for having us. This Make is so cool. I'm so pumped. Are you really, the, really pumped? Let's, let's be honest. No, no, no I'm <laughs> the biggest McGregor fan. I trained at his gym. Oh, wow. Here we go. I, I went and trained there. Yeah. Like, let's get some stories. Yeah, here we go. 2015, I finished Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Yes. And I went to Dublin for a few days. And this was, I got into McGregor just when he got signed. It's the only thing I've been Hot ahead of the curve in my life. And uh, you're an original believer. OG. Absolutely. These days, yeah. Well, but, no, I'm sticking fat. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He'll come back. He will. He'll be He's right. got the same head as me, which is not good <laughs> for a prime UFC fighter. But he, uh, I went to his gym and it was a, a Friday lunchtime and I wanted to do a beginner's MMA class and I signed up and no one turned up and 10 minutes in, the person at reception at a straight blast gym in Dublin Shout out. I hope they're doing all right. And uh, <laughs> they said, just join this class. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I started doing warm-ups. And a couple of minutes in, I realized I'm uh-huh. in deep trouble yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What deep the fuck's water. going on? <laughs> yeah. And they said, you are in advanced Brazilian jiu-jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture you doing the Tony <laughs> Ferguson knee drop. No, I got it? bashed. I got just bashed Bash for an right hour up. and a bit. Yep. Oh there were, I think, 15 of us and the seven or eight were in a fight camp. Okay. Like professional oh, fighters. So, and the only one happy to see me was a member of the Garda, which is the Irish police. Mm-hmm. And he said, I've been getting I've been, I've, I've been getting smashed for a year and a half here. And now finally there's someone shitter than me. Hand the baton on yeah. to you. But I saw McGregor come in. <gasps> came into the gym and I was Ooh. on my belly, someone on my back. <laughs> oh boy. And looking to choke me out. And I had the hands there. Did he legit- And McGregor walked in Good and up. I had the choice of like do I wave at my hero, you know, and go to sleep yep. or fight it off? What'd you go so with? I fought, fought it off. I fought it off. Did you hear him from this, the corner going, who the fuck is who that guy? Who the fuck is that guy? Well, he, he, was never, uh, in. he never tried to fight it off. He just tapped. So, you, yeah, you know, I should have. I should have inspiration from yourself. You should have tapped on the neck crank. He saw you do it and then it came one of his things. It wasn't an angry Dagestani on my back, though. It was just a member of the Irish Guard. Well, plans are to have Connor on this pod at some point in our life, so I will ask him about that story. He might remember it. You never know. I'm sure he would. Was there someone struggling as you walk past quickly eight years ago? Many years ago. Unbelievable. Have you got any stories of being on the mat, Melissa? I have not trained at Connor McGregor's gym. Oh, we're talking Sadly. about this. I asked you if you'd had you ever done any training. Well, I have done a little bit of kickboxing training um, in Brunswick a few years ago. Nice. So, you know, nothing to rate, but, you know, 
Did you get Greco? Did you into the professional fight <laughs> camps? <that> <laughs> <laughs> came yeah. First class. No, we'll just, just get like, you with the seven fighters yeah. that are actually going to have a professional fight. Exactly. But no, I've been a, a fan of MMA for, you know, about two issues now mm-hmm. and okay. just have fallen hard for the sport. It's Was absolutely Was it like a COVID amazing. sort of thing? Because there's been a lot of people that have – like sort of dive straight into the sport during COVID and sort during, of developed a love that. for it when there was nothing much else going on? Um, it was during that sort of, um, that COVID sort of period, mm. coming out of COVID. Yep. But um, I have a couple of friends who are really into into MMA and sat down and actually explained the mm. mechanics of what was going on. So rather than just sort of watching fights and just kind of not understanding what was going on. I had some really kind people be able to explain the elements of, you know, different fight disciplines as it was happening and what the strategies were. And I, it started to kind of fall into place mm. in terms of seeing the sport in a more strategic way yeah. rather than it just being, a you know, a swang and bang, yeah. which is also fun to watch, normally, let's be frank. Yeah, yeah, the the, the really MMA fun. fans, <laughs> when we try and educate someone or get someone on board, it's like today with that knockout where the man starts seizuring. That they walk into the room at that point and go, this is barbaric. Like, what are we actually? It's very sure. hard to bring them on board. I reckon it's always like when you watch The Sopranos and you say it's a great show, but it's always someone getting shot at that moment that you're trying to get them on board. That's so, like, it. MMA doesn't often do itself justice. It's with definitely that. So, a sport. I find that people find it easy to judge, mm-hmm. and it's very polarizing. You're either kind of you know into it for one reason or another, but. The way it was described to me is that it's like a game of chess with brutal, you know, brutal results or brutal potential um, because you have two fighters who can be disciplined in any number of different sports and you have to read your opponents and figure out how to overcome them. And I think that that's... That takes um, a huge amount of skill. It takes a, a massive team around them. And then also the fighters that have really massive fight IQ, like Volk, for example, who can modulate on the spot, read how the conditions are changing and pull different things out of the kit bag. To me, that's deeply inspiring as an athlete because it's not just one sport, it's many sports. So I always think if someone doesn't like blood, you show them some like Damien Meyer. A bit of submission. Choke out, you know. No <laughs> blood. Craig just does with Just back. a human anaconda. He's <laughs> yeah. just slowly victory. choking <laughs> him out. And you go, did you like that? And then show him, uh, you know, and you finally get to a violent Rory McDonald, Robbie yeah, Lawler. Robbie Lawler. Or just you show know. him a Michael Chandler fight or something like yeah. that. And just yeah. Yeah. You don't start him off at the – Yeah. Got or slow. show him that and you go, is that a bit too much? All right, let's bring it back. And <laughs> then – Even, I always even think, the Aldana Rosa fight oh, today. Oh, that oh, was goodness. great. Oh, yeah. today, that was exactly. What a chong. <laughs> Normally I see people <laughs> – I'm going to steal that. Sorry. <laughs> no, I like it. What sorry, a chong, he said. Mel has immediately thought, this is a bad mistake bringing me on with her. But – Normally I see fighters. This is not a good day Did for you bring, notice that we bring a friend here and we've to left work day. Mel on the couch with you. Yeah, the camera's oh, I'm gonna sorry, be, Mel, but <laughs> you see a lot of fighters training their shins by kicking trees. <laughs> yeah. Aldana looked like it was the opposite. She got someone to just smash a tree into her inner thigh and she's like, well, if I can take that. Yeah, exactly. She just <laughs> let it happen. Then this human leg will be nothing. Her leg was chopped up. <laughs> it was, but it she was just kept going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We she had her in our little multi as well today. I was getting a bit sweaty watching that on the <laughs> yeah. on the train on the way in. I'm thinking, Irene, what have you done to me? You've cooked my whole day. But nah, nah. she just persevered. No, How the rest of we go? Bloody good, mate. I'll tell you what. It's been a die a few weeks. We've had a horrible few weeks on the punt, but I'll tell you what, today we are cooking with gas. So it's a cheers, cheers, Maddie. It's been a great day on the punt for the boys. But uh, (laughs) one from one. Cheers. Today, Josh Josh Emmett KO. Best. You had that, did you? I go, if you think the earth's flat, I don't think you can fight. (laughs) And I was spot on. He went nine nine. nine. The only thing flat was Bryce Mitchell today, (laughs) wasn't it? (laughs) Well, someone in front of me did yell when he got knocked out, stood up and yelled. The earth is round, motherfucker, and yelled that at the screen and then said maybe his brain's flat, which I don't I, I don't agree with that, but no. you, know, you win something, some, you lose some. Today, Bryce though. got up. He was good to go. Look, he eventually got up, didn't he? Yeah. He Took sort six, of uh, – Six goes to get the mouthpiece out. He that struggled was, there for a second. Was, they're going. hard. Have you ever tried to get a mouth guard out? Well, no. I think if someone gets it out in one, that's <laughs> sus. The fact he got it out in six means he's fine. Oh, oh, it's no, Melissa, how you said that. It's like it's not just – there's a lot of consensus in the world today, especially mainstream Australia. I feel like sure. we're sort of yes. a decade behind mm-hmm. on everything in Australia to a certain extent. But more people like yourself that can come out and sort of tell people that it's not just a blood sport. It's not just a violent, barbaric sport. There's people like Alex Volkanovsky, Robert Whitaker, these types of guys who are the essence of Australia. Yeah. There's no better role models than these guys. I think more people need to get behind them. 
Absolutely. I think, you know, the qualities of a, of a great fighter that certainly I value are hard work, consistency, um, showing up and being able to, you know, kind of look at things like strategy, look at things like working in a team environment to execute something that you've all planned. I mean, these are all, you know, characteristics of a great fighter. And on, on top of that, you mentioned Whitaker, you mentioned Volk. They're also great family human mm-hmm. beings yep. who celebrate their family, their partners, the support that they receive in order to be able to do what it is that they do. And, you know, they're very grateful for it because there's a lot of sacrifice involved in going away to a fight camp for a couple of months exactly. and committing yeah. to that, maybe not seeing their family as often as they would like to, um, but still being able to come back to a family. And it's not just those two. There are lots of great Australian fighters that are in a very similar situation and, to me, like that's that's a real that's a real sign of someone who has you know a commitment to striking some kind of balance between having a life and pursuing something that they really bloody love. Well, we had Tyson Pedro on the pod of probably a month ago now, and that's a perfect example. Before the Perth fight, it was his daughter that actually gave him gastro and cooked him for that fight. So coming oh, into his kids. next fight, kids. yeah, kids. God, come. it's always who, something, isn't it? Who would have him? But like yeah. his we next had him fight, in a we didn't know about the gastro. Jeez, it would have we been didn't know nice about the gastro. About the gastro but, Honestly, uh, if you ask me, do you want gastro from your kid or what Bryce Mitchell cop today? I'll take I'll take give me a little nap. There's, give me a yeah. give me a quick nine eye. Yeah. Until having a child go. that's gone to daycare, I never really understood what gastro is. Yeah, like, no, oh, bad. you think shitting and vomiting at the same time is a myth, don't you? Oh no. It ain't a myth, Try mate. working in the food industry. Oh, well, there you go. What do we got? Give us some stories. Any shit yeah. and vomiting stories? Or? Uh, <laughs> gastro is part and parcel of, um, no of, of what it is. And no, it is, regardless of how you receive it, not great. Full-blown no. gastro is just the worst. My family earlier this year, my younger son copped it on the Tuesday mm-hmm. and my wife copped it on the Wednesday and the eldest son copped it it's on the Thursday. It's always a two-day And I was it? like, I'm unbeatable. You're Honestly, I'm McGregor kissing. Oh, I'm McGregor right. strutting around the house. I can't and be stopped. Saturday, and I was on set filming something on the Friday. You you and I said, hey, I just started sweating for no reason. Called my wife. <laughs> she said, what's happening? I go, I just had a coffee for the – I'd given up coffee for a little while. Maybe it's the coffee. Mm. Haven't had that for a bit. Yeah, maybe it is. And then I stood up and went, no, I can't really see. Um, is that what coffee does? Well, I've gone blind. <laughs> I'm spewing. You, is that coffee? wrapped in plastic and, yeah. and trying to cut at the time Yeah, as well. I was in a lot of garbage bags sitting in a sauna going, is this? <laughs> but the gastro is no is good. absolutely. It's no, no good, good mate. It is doesn't no stop good. with the daycare either. There's, there's all sorts no, of. Daycare is no good. It is good, but, yeah, the illnesses are like nothing else. But, yeah, as you said before, like Tyson Pedro and his <laughs> second fight, he stayed away because he didn't want that to happen again. So he stayed away from his family for the whole fight camp. Like yeah. the commitment and sacrifice that takes. Yeah. You probably well, were there. You also saw him. Dad looking for a break. You well, know, yeah, I don't want to. He probably loved it. Cool. I'm the same. Yeah. Secretly, yeah. he's like happy to be away. But like the commitment. It is. I'm, it's you, people it's are relying, like your entire team have trained you to get to that particular point. The last thing you want to do is, you know, jeopardize you, there it, are yeah. no sick days like in, no. in this sport. So, um, but staying away from your family, that's a tremendous sacrifice mm. and, you know, one that paid off for him in that in that case. It's a sport like no other, though, with that stuff. Like basketballs and that they travel, but you don't do, like, 10-week camps where yeah. you've got to be – it's yeah. weird like that, I reckon. Like, it's it's hard to actually explain to people that yep. are into it. Like And the consequences. It's life and death when every time you step in there. Sure. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Really so what, what do we think about today? Today was good. What are we we're doing? It. We had a lot of feedback, though. It. We had a lot of feedback from people saying, oh, because we, we did a – a dabble live stream, which was yep. interesting. Shout out. Um, I was great at dabble. Well, yeah, they're Love fan- them. They're fantastic. Yep. I thought it was risky, though, having Dane Swan with no dump button. Um, Dane Swan on <laughs> Dane a Swan in a pub, is a bit- alcohol fighting, no dump button. Like, yeah. strange, strange concept to go with the first no, one. But- you walked him down, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he was Most pretty, be- the, he was you know, calm. you're fighting five with fire. <laughs> if you take a pub and betting and everything to Dane Swan, mm. he's on the back foot, <laughs> yes. you know. Sweet. Well, so a lot of the feedback coming through, though, was like, oh, this is boring. This is like garbage card. And where was it? No, nah, the last two fights, clearly. The, the, obviously, the two championship fights went yeah. the distance. But we find a lot of people, if the fight doesn't end in some sort of carnage in the first yeah. round, people are going, oh, it's boring. But mixed martial arts, you gotta, you got you to love every part of it, well, I reckon. That's, that's the unpredictability of exactly. it is you, you are still seeing tremendous displays of all kinds of different disciplines. You know, we, we saw a great rear naked choke submission early on in the day. Yes. Um, it It's not all, yeah. 
you know, we, of course, not all being, barn burners. Today, no, that's today, not how it works. Today being no. at the pub and watching, because normally I, like, I kind of, like, watch it in pretty clinical settings. I don't want to be distracted <laughs> by things. Office. I want to. Mel's I want always to. in a hospital. Yeah. Going, Please put the fights on. I want, yeah. Glo- I gloves up. <laughs> Very clinical, you know, you know, oxygen rich yeah. environment, hyperbaric yeah, chamber, I, ideal. Yeah, that's, that's a good place to watch. <laughs> Obviously, recovering, you, you know. Okay. I did the opposite. I vape while watching it. I'm, I'm going. You sit in an infrared I'm sauna and vape. <laughs> I'm trying hard to find easy, you know. Um, but it's. Um, I like to listen to what's going on because I'm still learning about this. You know, I'm. I'm. I am. As you um, accused me of being today, Whoa. Johnny Come Lately. Oh. I didn't say Johnny Come no, Lately. You did so. say you said, "Oi, Johnny Come Lately," and I'm like, "That's fair because, by comparison, I've like, only I've only been." Everyone has no, to start course. somewhere, Nick. So <laughs> I, I think start, it's good. Yeah. I felt I got in late. I started watching in like 2012. <laughs> You're a Johnny after Come a mate. Lately, let's be after a mate sent me a DVD <laughs> of some like UFC knockouts. Where were you in the mid 90s when Vitor Belfort was Ooh. delivering just <laughs> death blows like in the mid 90s? Oh, no, Where were you, mate? Him. Someone I got to see me, some TRT Belfort. Okay. Someone showed me the Gary Goodridge <sighs> submission, the crucifix. Yeah. The, oh, the other day. These ones? Yeah, there's nothing worse than that. Brutality. It was horrifying. I would verbal tap if I was put in that it position. Was, I was like, mm. tap, tap, tap. Like, you just wouldn't yeah. allow the guy to kill you. But, but also I, I phenomenal to watch at yeah, the same time. Yeah, so I'm time. still, I'm still, you know, still learning about it. But I like to listen to what's going on because obviously you benefit from the commentary of, uh, of the you. opinions yeah, of what's going that. on. But at the pub or you at, don't get to hear anything in yeah. a in a public setting when you're watching on mass, that excitement of when there is a really satisfying victory and the whole place yeah, just erupts. It is, it like is a good atmosphere. Any kind of sport. If you're watching the Olympics or you're watching, you know, a, a, a World Cup soccer match or something like that, and everybody erupts together, there is that human spirit thing where you bond over the excitement. And, yeah, of course we want to see that. And you do get that with UFC, but you also get nuance. And I think Mm -hmm. that it's good to appreciate the nuance because these people step into the octagon open to anything and you have to respect them for it because we don't do that, obviously. No. If you'd start at the pub. There would have been a few people stepping into That's the office. That's I was upset with Mel. I was about to turn pro at the pub. Best. Where's your best? Yeah. I think I'm pretty good at jujitsu now that I've had three beers. Yeah. Let me have a crack, you know. And you got Milan with you. He'll, yeah. He'll, he'll, he's, a great, he's a great hype man. He'll make you think you could beat anyone. Shout out Milan. He he's the Don King of together. pub MMA. You see the best and the worst in the, the, the fighting at the pub, like, People, yeah, and then it like the testosterone's but, at the highest. It just, but I think I'd still, I, some of the best fights I've ever seen. I saw the McGregor Aldo mm. uh, fight, the you knockout it, thirteen or? seconds. No, I was at the, at the I was at a pub in Melbourne at, oh, a, at an Irish bar, yeah, and the wow. sound was oh. insane. I've been at some mad fights, cage side for Ronda Rousey, Holly Holm, Ooh, wow. cage side for Adesanya Whitaker. Mm-hmm. I've been to Vegas a bunch of times for a lot of cards. I was at one in like twenty thirteen. Velasquez Bigfoot, <laughs> where Whitaker was on the undercard, mm-hmm. and when he walked out, the Ooh, stadium brilliant. was only a quarter f- yeah. full, yeah. and someone yelled out "Aussie, Aussie, Aussie," <laughs> and to just hear a scattered "Oi, Oi, Oi" throughout the, <laughs> it's like oh, we're all it. here, we're all yeah. here to watch Rob. You know, <laughs> yeah. it was yeah. so cool to see someone like that. Seeing him at the half empty stadium on undercard's funny though, isn't well, it? That's it. Mm. You guys You're not really a Johnny Come Lately, then, then in 2012. Well, yeah, I was just no. making travel, fun of him. Travel no, he's not, he's not, but, you know, 2012. If he was going to, like, fact check and where we've been, where he, I reckon he's got us covered. You went to McGregor Alvarez at I Madison did. Square Garden. Oh, he, he likes to talk oh, about dream. this on the pod. Oh, I was Absolute watching it in bed with uh, my kids this morning while they were asleep. That was, I just <laughs> watch it occasionally because it's peak McGregor. It was the best. As is, as a McGregor fan who got in... Before it all kicked off. As you told us. And him. now, yeah, yeah, now still here. Well, my wife well, should never off. buy me a right present ever again because we were, th- we're there on our honeymoon and she works oh, for, she works for a stadium here and she had a friend that was at Madison Square Garden and we went and did a tour and she got me in the oct. It was all, but then we couldn't get tickets because it was insane. It was the first one that they yeah. ever did. Mm. And the guy's like, oh, look, I'll, I'll try. And then we're getting on all the ticket sellers. It was it. like yeah. And the event had started at this point. Correct. And he was texting so the, me like, what? The, the, the event was happening and he still hadn't got a ticket. Oh, so we were staying stressful. in the Athlete Hotel, which was a story for another. That was unbelievable because they were all there post drinking and when you get that amount of stuff going yeah. on. But that was a famous pub that Don King used to own and would wow. promote at Madison Square Garden and then he'd bring the people across the road. But So we're sitting there and then she got the like capitals, like we've got two tickets. Do you want them? Run. Go. 500 US, which is dear in 
what was that year? 2016. Yeah, it was pretty, doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. We, so we got in so just for the main card. Yeah. Sat at the back with a bunch of Irish guys. Would have been unreal. And I was weirdly not a McGregor guy. So I've come on. I'm, I'm a Twitter era McGregor guy. I've come on post fighting. I'm a post fighting era McGregor. He likes now Who McGregor. He didn't McGregor now. Yeah, I know. Since he, he beat Cerrone, <laughs> this guy looks all right. <laughs> no, 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 that's the worst look, time to get on McGregor. Fans. I'm a big yeah. Diaz guy. So yeah, of course. I, you can't like both. He didn't. Opinion. He didn't like McGregor on the come up, and he no. didn't like Stone Cold Steve no. Austin. So you can't trust this bloke's opinion on anything. I go with it. No, that's fair. But now I've I enjoy his little voice memes. I remember Edinburgh Fringe Festival one year because the timing's different over in the UK to watch the cards there. They start at 3 a.m. or something for the yeah, UK. Yeah, brutal over there. There was a whole bunch of – so Daniel Sloss, a superstar comedian around the world, at his place there was a bunch of us watching the second McGregor-Diaz yes, and everyone's fight. McGregor good except fight. for the comedian Ari Shafir, oh. his mates, and he had 209 <laughs> written on his chest. <laughs> he was still throwing down Diaz. He's funny. Do you know Ari Shafir? We no, very well. We yeah. all day here. I'm Love a big him. Mark Norman fan, big Joe List fan. Yeah. Can we talk yeah. about that? Yeah. Two's gays, anyone out there? I, I Do you know Joe one. List? Yeah. I know them well, yeah. I know Norman well. He used to live in the States for a bunch, yeah. Did you? Yeah. I love Mark Norman. Yeah. He's great. I'm going to derail this whole podcast. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, just segue. Shout out to Mark Norman. Yeah. Yeah. Segue around. There's I don't know no if plan. I'm allowed to admit on pod, but Louis C.K., do you know him? I'm a big fan of him too. Can we talk yeah, about that? Of I love course. Him. You can say whatever you want. Mate, I love it's it. Your it's your podcast. It's your podcast. It is our podcast. We're not, we're not buying <laughs> me. Do you it? It's no, well, maybe we'll come on your podcast and we'll just talk <laughs> comedy some <laughs> point. But He's just got you on so you can get on yours. Enough, I reckon there's uh, enough podcasts talking just comedy. Probably is. But Mark Norman and Joe List are superstars. And Irish Fear. Yeah, he's good too. He's good too. But yeah, Joe List, my boy. Shout out. Yeah. Shout out all of them. Well, Theo like, Bong. Talk about what you We're do. We're going to try and get like, Theo on, actually. He's a big fight fan. We're going to try and get him on. I going to say, like, you, what you do is incredibly hard, the live comedy stuff. Like, I, I remember I worked, worked at CUB yeah. for a long time, and you, you were at Bullshit. a- Bullshit. Yeah. You, did a, you had to do a, a set there. Christmas party. Yes, Corporate Christmas party. party. So I used to work at CUB in the call centre. Oh, there you go. At Carlton United Brewery. Here we go. And then I was the face of Carlton Dry. You were. And they got me That's back right. to do a Christmas party, no, and I said, no, guys- No, I was we didn't like, bomb. Don't. No one listened. So, like, I yeah. was watching him going, this bloke's, they've got, they've paid him probably. I don't know what they paid, but they've got him Good. up there. Corporate gigs They paid. didn't even really yeah. announce it. They That's just gave you a mic, and you just stood there. 100%. I knew what. Walking in, I go. This is a Christmas gig <laughs> from hell. for a brewery. So you didn't take it personally that fuck no, you couldn't. I used to work there. I'd been to one of those gigs. <laughs> it's a it's a it's an outrageous company. Yeah. Once you knock the walls, you peel a few like, onion peels. Yeah. But it's a it's a bit going Not on. Not CB, there. but geez, <laughs> it's like I know some of those Christmas stand up gigs. They must walking be in. Imagine working hard all year, mm. and then all of a sudden it's like we're putting on free piss, free food. <laughs> Yeah. Hold on, time out. Yeah, some a bloke. stranger is yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. go, fucking, what is this? <laughs> yeah, I still take the cash, but yeah, it, you obviously cash. it's not as hard as getting into a cage and fighting someone, but there is parallels. There is. I'll say this to all <laughs> fighters watching this. <laughs> Do an hour. A 20 minute corporate set is harder than 15 minutes of fighting. You heard it from <laughs> me, Nick Cody. You've heard it here first. Yeah, because at least set. someone can knock you out. No one <laughs> is there to knock me out. There's no one with a. There's no red sign. There's no gun in there. There's no towel. There's no towel. There's no, towel. There's no mean, coach yeah. going. Oh, I should have actually come up out. and thrown a towel in for you. I should oh, say, he's had enough. Eight Let's minutes just in, give the him a comes. Corporate gigs. How did the Carlton yeah. Dry thing? Was that because you were working there? They just said you're a pretty no, funny I just guy. Did like, a gig, or, and apparently I have the head of like an everyday beer drinker, and I don't know where they get that from. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm all wrong. about it. You yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> well, then you've wrong. got the same parallels with what you do mm -hmm. and the the new world of social media. With you put something out, and people are just there to attack you. Does that? Happen? Yes. 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 You can it surely not. You can't. I get it. I do. I do. Um Tell I try I try <laughs> to limit um the way that social media like I interact with social media because I do a job, you know, I, I share certain things, but you know, depending on say who we have in the competition and someone gets knocked out but they have a tremendous fan base, for example, yeah, they, will, they will they will come at you. Out, yeah. And really? I yeah, that's absolutely. Wild. It's a big I didn't fuck their dessert. <laughs> and I it's on there. and that's the thing is like you might believe and maybe the parallel with with fighting as well is you can believe in someone's potential, but it's what they bring on the day. And if you fuck up, mm -hmm. then we judge who was best on the day. Yeah. It's not whether or not you like someone more. You might like someone and believe in them. Yeah. But if they aren't the best dish on the day, I can't give them the points no. to win or keep them in the competition. And that's exactly what it is. You can't take it personally at that point. So, mm. but fans are fans. The and we know a that, place. And the internet <laughs> is a very mixed bag of all sorts of people, varying degrees of 
you know, we're, 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 grasp, we're, grasp on reality. We're starting to figure that out now too. Oh, we had Volcon yeah. obviously last week, so now we're getting out there a bit more. The Don't comments on YouTube, YouTube comments. I was like, new, there's a new comment. I'm like, what have they said? Who led Are they like, who's that him? weird bald guy with, like, what's he talking about? There was one comment on Reddit that was like, who the fuck are these two presenters, mate? All they're doing is sucking Volk off, mate. <laughs> Talking about like, yeah. oh, yeah, let's unzip their pants and suck Volk off. I'm like, exactly. of, course the greatest. of course we are. That's greatest what we were doing. Away of all to- what the- else do you yes. expect from yes. us? Like, yeah. It's not shit. Yeah. Leave us alone. We're just having a crack. <laughs> like, I can only imagine on your, it'd be hard not to look at that, though. I learned very early on not to look at the comments. I think Mm -hmm. that's a really, that's the way I cope with things. I know people, different people deal with it differently. Some people find tremendous satisfaction. I think you're with three men in the room who look at every comment and go, (laughs) I will deal with this personally. But, you know, some people are really great at at a fast quip and that it becomes part of who you are, that you interact in that way that you kind of give as good as you can get. For me, that's not particularly good for me. So I tend to kind of, you know, veer away from that. I know what I do on the day Mm. is what I can live with. It's, it's the fairest thing I can do is in that moment, make a judgment call based on what I know and call it a day at the end of it. So do you have contestant blow ups off air? Do people? No, people are pretty cool with that. Obviously people get upset if they, you know, Australian Idol, if they, they're they're not letting every leave or whatever it is. Some people probably think it is. But once they kind of get over the, I guess, the, the self-disappointment of yeah. um, of the whole situation and know that they did their best and know that it's not a personal thing, that we're judging critically. It's we're, You're judging based on the, the minutiae and the detail of, of when you judge food. That's all that it is. It's not a personal thing. It's never a personal thing. And you have to let the chips fall as they do on the day. Your life was propelled into the stratosphere getting on MasterChef, but mm-hmm. at the time, MasterChef was like such a big deal. You had like the George Columbaris's, Matt Preston's. It was such an institution. Did you guys feel that, the pressure going in and like trying to prove yourselves a bit? We were aware of how beloved the exactly. former judges yeah. um, are. You know, it's not even were. They are still beloved. You know, they are amazing. Their chemistry was brilliant. And had it not been for that, I would not have had a shot at this. So I will always be tremendously respectful, you know, for what they created. Um, But as a result of that, because what they did was so singular to them, there was no comparison. I'm not a dude or white. You didn't wear a cravat. You know, I could give a cravat a go, but like, I just, I am, I am. You don't bounce up and down like George Colin Butters does. (laughs) It's a bit the passion, yeah. Yeah, or like, or like Tom, like Thompson today. (laughs) Exactly, I love that. Um, Passion, the cookie. But you can only Rob Sitchman impersonation that one. (laughs) Do it again. But the passion, yeah, the cookie. No, I can't do it. Rob (laughs) Sitch better than me. Sorry. (laughs) But it's um, yeah, you can only be yourself, and so I've worked really hard to create um an unwieldy freelance career where I've been able to achieve lots of different things and have um, have a hand in lots of different things. And so all I could all I could do at that point was just be myself in that moment. I was very love I was very lucky that I was working with two incredible co-hosts that we had each other in that moment yeah. and we were able to kind of work together and we had a great team environment. So um, that's that's what it is. It's a it's a team sport. Um, as much as you are there doing the thing in front of the camera, there's a whole bunch of people, as you know, with everything, yeah. with every production, there's a whole lot of people behind that too. We'll get back to the fights. It's got a full yeah. Oh, list of yeah, 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 ask him. Go on. Mate, clearly all the food's cold <laughs> when you really? eat it. has to be, doesn't it? Well, Not all of it is. Not? Isn't it just all cold? Not all of it is. It taste? What's I mean, going well, on? I mean, Dessert Masters makes well, things a lot easier now because it's mainly, no, it's mainly, you know. What's the go? cake and ice cream and things like that. But Take us behind the scenes. What we do is with both shows, we hot taste. So as soon as the the, okay. the clock's done, uh, we will walk around and, mm. you know, taste the, you know, taste the pasta, the steak, the whatever it happens to okay. be. So we know what it was like in terms of structural integrity, flavour, yep. texture, all of that immediately as it's finished. By the way, and they didn't even know you were checking for structural integrity. That's course. pretty good. You need there's to a, check there's for There's some apartments integrity. in Melbourne I don't think have been checked for structural <laughs> integrity. So I was checking for the so structural check integrity of the beers today, yeah. weren't you? Okay, I'm just going to see if this one's cold enough. Takes it. Well, what was it? Solid. Cold <laughs> when it comes to beer? Cold, not old. There you go. Correct. Sounds we good to me. Put that on your gravestone. I cannot take credit for that. But um, 
But so we, yeah, I mean, if a, if a dumpling has no structural inter- integrity, yeah, then the useless. stuffing's yeah. going to fall straight out of it. So you need to you need to know these things. So we will go and, and hot taste, but it won't be the necessarily the fully finished dish as it looks on the camera. Mm, that's okay, the, cool. that's the beauty shot. So we're using that information plus what we taste on camera. Good, good, good. And if there's say a sauce, it'll be heated to the temperature that it's supposed like to be. Because it's it For has example. upset me and sort of Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's so good. Let it good as if they don't I've been very I've been perturbed for years. <laughs> I'm like there, missing, uh, yeah. why are you eating that cold? They're like, eating some sort of chicken saddest, dish and I'm like, how can you judge it if the it's saddest cold? conspiracy theory to <laughs> yeah, get yeah, in yeah. on. Mate, You're not even flat earth for nine eleven years. That <laughs> That cold. pancake is cold, <laughs> yeah. and you know it. I, l- I like that. That filet mignon is tepid. <laughs> you're not a flat earther. You're a cold fooder. Cold, cold fooder. Cold fooder. Cold fooder. Okay. Yeah, exactly. No. Where no, do we go from cold food? We have we have the most epic food team in the world. So they keep things at the temperature and right. the the ideal kind of how it's meant to be. And so that's that's, <laughs> that's how it happens. You've turned me on, Mel. <laughs> No, okay, just, I just, don't worry, we had it on the pot, I've cleared that up. As a cold fooder, I fully understand that you may not believe <laughs> no, what I'm believe saying. No, I believe you. Mrs. will be happy that, that I can just stop mentioning it. I can stop mentioning it every oh, single no, day. No, but, no, I love that. Yeah. And as you've been to the pub today to watch the fights, we'll yes. get back to the fights. What is Melissa Leong's go-to feed at the pub oh, yeah, when no, you watch the fights? Ooh. That's what I want to know. Can I quickly just talk about... The Please. problem this has caused in my household. Oh, no. My wife is a massive... Master Chef, Dessert Masters. Look at it. Melissa Leong fan. Here we the go. biggest uh, Melissa Leong oh, yep, fan. Yep, yep. And about a year ago, we did a gig together at a winery in South Australia. Mm-hmm. And McLaren uh, Vale. Yeah, it was. No, uh, Bar- oh, Bar- the Barossa. Yeah, Bar- yeah. Bar- yeah. <laughs> it, it was called Grapes of Mirth. <laughs> Merrick Watts runs these big comedy, music, <laughs> food, everything. Yeah. Yeah. But is he fit right. now, Merrick? He's yes. shredded. Yes. Really? He won SAS Australia. <laughs> That's right. He's all and I know SAS dudes he's and he looks ripped. better than them. It's cost ridiculous. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. His property in Brisbane is one of the coolest yeah. things. Of, when he, I saw it on realestate.com when they listed it. That was one of the coolest places on earth. He's oh, had. really? Yeah, oh, he was yeah. live like Instagramming big... from an ice bath this morning. Oh, oh, yeah. I always thought well, Merrick was like carrying Rosso. Just quiet. I'll put that on the pod. Rosso, you're no good. But <laughs> We do say that. We just go off. The dad did the gig. Yeah. It was my wife's birthday, but I flew over to South Australia, did the gig, Mm -hmm. and everyone, all the other comedians were staying for a few nights, and when it ended for me for the day, I had to fly home. And Mary said, I got you a van. Mm -hmm. Someone may be in the van. I was like, all right. I just figured it was another comedian. I've had infinity wines. <laughs> I hop in. It's Melissa Leong. I'm like, fuck. Oh, no. The pressure's on. You're like, that's right. I yeah. can't cook chicken. That's fair. That's Why awesome. am I in a van with, yeah. <laughs> and so we we're talking about how bad I am at cooking. I get home <laughs> to my wife in Melbourne. It was her birthday. So her sisters and mates are there. And I'm like, you'll never guess who. <laughs> it was Melissa Leong. <laughs> and shit. we spoke about fights. Hey, and hey. my wife has still. Ref- She's so upset that you love we fights. We talked about uh-huh. brining chicken for about five minutes and yeah. then the rest of the fights, fights, fights. hour it was all of fights. conversation went home. It was all fights. In the but today. With Candy, you know, he's like the, the polka polka. With the polka polka. polka, polka, polka. Yeah. Like the polka polka, the midby polka. The, but the, 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 the mum's just looking at him like. Yeah. Oh. It's all about the fights. It's all fights, chat. Yeah. Although we could talk about brining chicken if you want. That sounds pretty good too. Well, I forgot about that a few wines, but I didn't remember. I got a home and Uber Eats to kebab, but Yeah. I, We're in the I, time and place. Sometimes it, there is nothing better than a kebab. Thank you. It I really just it kebab. really you depends. Chicken, lamb or a mix? Lamb. Just a straight lamb? Oh, yeah. really? Lamb. Interesting. I, mean, I would have said chicken. chicken. I, I, can appre- I can appreciate doing the whole I would have said chicken. I'm a mixed chicken guy. thing, but I uh, lamb. Yeah, it's yeah, got to be smart. That's... Lamb is better than chicken. Yeah. We, I think we have similar backgrounds based on the – Red beards and our body structure. <laughs> CUB. And Great I reckon, structure. and CUB. And CUB history, yeah. I honestly think people that order just chicken are going, well, I'm making the healthy choice here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually I'm getting fucking bar- shredded at 3 a.m. Yeah. Sauce in it as well with uh, the chicken. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Chili, no, I'm chili. Yeah, garlic. chili and barbecue. Okay. barbecue. Or chili and or garlic. The, the Holy yeah. Trinity. Got it. <laughs> you must. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm learning so much about you guys right now. This yeah. is great. I, I, Where's I, our show, Munted Chef? Because <laughs> <laughs> this is a beautiful thing you've whipped up. <laughs> what is this, a cheeseburger? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, as you said, though, your missus was unhappy that you talked about fights and not mm. brining chicken. I think there's a yeah. lot of wives, a lot of partners out there that can't stand the fights, right? As you said, they yeah. think it's brutal. They think it's blood sport. My missus got into it around about the Conor McGregor time as well, so she's on what board, right? Yours maybe on the fence, likes it a little bit. There's a lot of partners out there that can't stand it. Mm. Likes it enough. 
likes it enough, right? But every single Sunday, we're like, the fights are on. What are we doing Sunday? <laughs> fights are on. Fights are on. They probably get sick of it. But we didn't put the fights on. <laughs> it's not our fault. It's not well, our fault. Dana White is putting <laughs> yeah, fights yeah, yeah. on. Can't blame us. But there like, used to be less fights. We try and tell everyone <laughs> how good it is, but <laughs> they don't. Any fault. logistics with like global time zones and things. Every Tuesday during the day. I'm just a human who <laughs> happens. Just a human being. To like fight. He's yeah, just a man right. at the end of the day. Yeah. But like we can't we can't like <laughs> tell people enough. But I think coming from someone like yourself, Melissa, sure. have you got like a spiel, like a sixty minute sixty, 60 second a sixty, a 60 minute, second really? spiel? Here's, one hour. Here's Get my TED across talk the about right, MMA. One hour. Oh, there we go. <laughs> tell the partners, tell the missus out there, the wives, the girlfriends that can't stand fighting, but they might listen to someone like yourself, why they should actually give it a chance for blogs like us. <laughs> well, I that's a really good question. I think that what I love about MMA personally is that, like we said before, it is a multidisciplinary sport. And when you look at the detail involved in people, you know, strategizing against each other, you need to be clever. You, it's not just about um, brutality. It's not just about people beating the shit out of each other. It's about um, the ultimate sort of, it's the ultimate display of athleticism. And I suppose you can liken it to looking at a piece of artwork that you don't, like if you look at a particular genre of painting that you don't get, like you look at Jackson Pollock and you go, my three-year-old could do that. Yeah. Um, but when someone actually takes the time to explain the history involved in his approach to art, for example, and then you start to understand it, you look at that painting completely differently. I was very lucky that the people around me that are into MMA were very generous in their time to sort of stop and explain what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at um, elements of jiu-jitsu here. I'm looking at elements of boxing here. He did that because this guy's trained in this and that was the best way to be able to subdue and win the fight. You know, to be able to see the nuance and the detail, I don't see it as, um, you know, a, a vicious display of, of humanity. I see the nuance and the detail and the beauty in athleticism. And I'm not into, you know, lots of different sports. But for me, being able to have to be disciplined in any number of different sports and then mash that together and see who comes out on top, that's unpredictable. That's exciting. Um, it's really fun to watch. And you don't know who's going to win. You can like, that's why betting is a big part of this sport is, mm -hmm. but you so can, you can say, well, you know, we, we like Ferguson. We think that Ferguson should win this, but you who know, could turn it around? who could turn it around? Just don't know. Would, um, you know, would Bryce Mitchell, um, pull a twister today? You know, <laughs> it's just a fine line between everything. The, yeah. Summary, that, that's about as articulate as anyone's ever spoken. It's unbelievable. I'm <laughs> starting to think somebody here is a professional, uh, broadcaster. <laughs> Oh Who happens goodness. to love fights. Wow. <laughs> that is the thing. You love fights. I, I love that you love it. You will you will hit me up on Instagram in the middle of no it might be a UFC fight night and I'll get a <laughs> Oh, I'll get a DM. A, when the Luke a, um, Gary Daddy, fight yeah. Yeah. was pulled, Shattering. I sent it to you and I was like, oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, no. Or I'll copper. Did you see that knockout? It could be a weird, and it could be, be like, a UFC I fight night been, undercut. I've been I've feeding got my, my child. Yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I, yeah. No, I get it. Like, we were trying to get you on the pod. Obviously, we're very grateful you're here. But when we tried to get you in today and you were sort of, you know, maybe I've got some time. And then you went, oh, but fuck, it's a good card, isn't it? <laughs> And I went, how good is this person? Like, like the, you get it. You get the it. main event today, the Edwards Covington, mm. and people may think it's boring, but it's like Edwards kickboxing High base, yeah. Covington wrestling base. Great. He's not just going to walk into a no. zone where he can be taken down. It's a chess match. No. The annoying bit is like, Covington, why don't you try and take him down? Yes. But – because he doesn't want to walk into the range of a kickbox. That's, that's the, to, um, that's the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. I said to him, we've never actually seen when someone gets so angry at the press conference, that never flows into a fight where they just rush yeah. them angry. They, yeah. they tend to still be able to Take understand that that person's check. very skillful yeah. and I can't just run at them like I'm at a pub, which would be good to see yeah. once, yeah. just once. Eldo McGregor maybe? Well, yeah. Well, that's he said he was, that was a textbook example of, like, of mental I'm, warfare getting the better of a boy. Yeah, okay. It was that, the best. That, well, I won't ask anybody. Nah, well, that's <laughs> one off. That's, <laughs> that, uh, that's <laughs> that. Uh, I love Ellie McGregor. But I will say, Aldo did cut him. He uh, hit him with the. They both they still both, hit him. It was yeah. nearly the first sort of proper. Double knock me, I've watched it more than <laughs> my child's birth. I saw my children being born. Once a piece. That's all you need. I've watched the Aldo and McGregor 1,500 times. I've been with the, the Aldo fight on. Yeah. Going, yeah, no. I don't push. need it. 
But yes. that, I think that's the other part of what I find so fascinating about, about this is that it's humans being human. And so, you know, you watch, for example, um, Adesanya walk into the octagon um, to fight Strickland and you know if Adesanya's on, the molecules in the air change. Like yeah. there's electricity crackling in your ears mm-hmm. when he's on. And that particular fight, he walked in and he did not. He They're was flat, not himself. Slow, didn't see him um, vintage Thompson, when he um, when he is on, you can't touch him. He's bouncing and he's moving, yep. and no one can match that rhythm. And he will subdue and and high five you afterwards. <laughs> um, there's there's magic in that, and there are those moments where there are fights like people like you guys who have been in love with this sport for so long. I'll hear the recall on these particular fights. Mm-hmm. And they live in your memory because of the humanity of of the people on the day. And it's like you've prepared for months to be there. You stand in there. You stand in that octagon together. It's only the two of you. And it's what you bring on the day that is so exciting about and I, it. I think there's something great about UFC, like fight fans. We're all fight fans. Yeah. Even if like a Kobe walks in today and everyone at the pub is booing Kobe, yeah. There's a booing, but there's a respect of oh. like you turned up to fight the baddest dude yep. at welterweight. Yeah. No one else is turning up. You turned up. Yep. So you can say all the stuff in the press conference, awful, atrocious. Shocking. And then two people have turned up to do a thing that nobody else is willing to do. Mm-hmm. And it's an impressive, <laughs> you know, yeah, Trump, whatever. It's like. But Someone you're, turned you're up to do it. Th- yeah, you're it's like, you. hey, you turned up, and now you got to fight someone who you spoke all this shit yeah. to. Mm. You got to look them down, and you have to fight them. There's no way out. It's the ultimate expression of just yeah. one person versus and another if person. Colby knocked him out. The same people that were booing him. Half because the Australian fickle nature. Half of them would have all of a sudden yeah. become fans and cheer. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's what we're like yeah. here. We talk about moments as well that live in your brain. You guys were all in Perth. Earlier in the year, is that correct? Yep. I, I miss Perth. Oh, I didn't you? get to go to Perth. You might have to leave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. He's asking a lot of back. questions with you. Man, I, I was at, I was at Volkanovski out. Holloway one. Oh, like Milan's, Milan's giving him a list of like how do we how yeah, do we yeah, stir yeah. this bloke? I'm opening up another can. <laughs> you, <laughs> Steve oh, Austin, you were, soft. Melissa was there. I was there. Yeah, I was at both both Australian fights this year. Thank you. That's when Volkanovski entered the arena. I don't think we've been a lot of sporting events in our life you know, grand finals, WrestleMania, a lot of things in our life, but nothing I've ever experienced would ever match, I don't reckon, that entrance of Volkanovski and the support and the the noise and the atmosphere that crowd was producing. It was palpable, absolutely palpable. I watch it on my phone. i got a good video. I still watch that pretty regularly, and every single time I watch it, it's like... We were were crying, weren't we? I I cried at the end because I thought he won. Like, I literally was crying. We were sobbing. Mm. That was yeah. But that, that, that whole was hard experience to... was one of the most incredible things I've ever ever been present for. I have to say the the live shows are a it's... privilege to attend. They are flawlessly executed. They are. Like the they... lights, the cameras, <laughs> well, how it all it's works. It's the best. It I've is. been to a bunch of boxing Beautiful. cards. <laughs> and it doesn't it, compare, mate. It, it's a, what's a fucking Rocker Stedford? What are we doing here? <laughs> we went to what one, are we, we doing? We we this is a world champion. championship fight and it looks I love boxing. Shit house. We've been the to UFC. Ken Bose was Haney and it was silent in the arena. No, we went to the That's one. That's where I was at. I don't want to name the oh, only killer yeah. promoter, it's, but it's like we, there was people texting us going, "We're watching the the main event like on pay per view," <laughs> and there's a dance. There was like yeah. a, a, an hour and a half dance yeah, no, thing because they were trying to pad it out. It's like they just don't yeah. get. And then the UFC comes in and it's just like bang, bang, bang. Yeah, Everyone's it's, happy. It's sleep. Yeah. Like, like it's just yeah. it's weird though. It's a show. I remember yeah. one of the first ones I went to in Vegas, they had a little John on the side. <laughs> Why wouldn't they? Who was <laughs> going on. It, yeah. Like the whole thing is a party. Yeah. Been to a few in Vegas, and I went to the opposite of you're saying when Volkanovsky walked out in Perth, that sound. I was at the Volk Holloway, the first one, at yeah. the um, uh, T-Mobile Arena in Vegas, one of the first fights I had there, and couldn't have had more hatred. Everyone loved wow. Holloway oh, at the yeah. time, Absolutely. except Still. for one drunk man. One well, I, I, we don't know you, obviously, <laughs> but I'm actually surprised that you've said you've been to Vegas multiple times and you're sitting here with uh, us because I, I feel like you going to Vegas, it's like a, a kid I've, in a candy store. I've spent store. over a month of my adult life <laughs> drinking in Las Vegas, which I, like, I don't know what that's like. The health 
you know, the negative consequences? Like, is it like <laughs> living under power lines? You know what I mean? I don't know what it is. You go, like you've said, I don't know how many kids you got, but your wife makes the kids give you an extra big hug because we don't know if dad's coming back. <laughs> no, I've only did, I did a couple trips this year. <laughs> okay. One was for a Bucks party. Oh, but we are just a couple to Vegas this year. I had a week-long Bucks party in Las Vegas. That's too much. And if what you are we have doing young, wrong with our lives, boys? Oh, I haven't been for years. If you have yeah. young children. trying to make this a we should go thing where we should go. Can... If you have young kids, a week-long Bucks party in Las Vegas is a health retreat. <laughs> if you have young children, you will come back refreshed. It's you'll you get actual should, sleep. You know what we should do? We'll do a Delgado's let's live podcast Vegas. in Vegas. Should we all go to Vegas? Let's go. <laughs> let's oh, go. Delgado's, please. We'll go to 300. <laughs> oh, UFC 300? Oh, UFC 300. We'll go. That. Oh, That's a dream. And we'll do a live oh, show, the, three, the four of us, and we'll have a great time. Delgado's. It's a radio break. Oh, All Milan time to line up. Yeah, mate, They're saying Conor McGregor's going to fight there. Prove it, Milan. Wow. Prove it. Yeah. Prove it. He doesn't need to tell him to prove it. <laughs> now it's all over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No good. It's a Ta- foregone conclusion. Take us through that Volk Holloway, number one, because not many people gave Volk a chance back in those days. Like, he was a heavy underdog going into that. Fight. You, you you're going to hate me on this podcast fight. for saying this, so I'm a massive fight for years. I had to leave halfway through the fifth <laughs> because a friend of mine Come was on. doing a show at the Cosmopolitan. <laughs> no, uh, Asher Trelevin, shout out. It was part of Opium, which mm-hmm. is like an adult version of Cirque du Soleil. Right. And it was great. And then. Did they show that f- several times a week, though? Like- but I was over there for that <laughs> night. Hey, whoa. whoa. Johnny come lately, haven't I? Crap. <laughs> Didn't even know you have seen. <laughs> I'm here now. Time you'll run that. But, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I I admitted it to Volk. I was on a radio show a, a few months later, oh, so and you we know got Volk, it on. Yeah. And I said to him, "Mate, we I knew you had it in the bag." Absolutely. I missed the Usman Commington, the first one. I was so confident, I left. Is what you said to him? Hundred yeah, percent. And he still You're said like, it was a dog this, act. And then you. <laughs> that is a dog act. He'll listen well, to this because he's a big fan mate. of ours, so he yeah. will, he Sorry, won't forgive Volk. you for that. Um, yeah, it's no good. I know. It was rough. Oh, no, I'm gonna. I reckon he was confident he left. Yeah. So if your teams are in a footy game by, by sixty Holloway points, fans. you, you can get to the comedy gig ten minutes late. I reckon. I know. I, I copped a lot of flack at the time. And you're a brave you were man spot for admitting on. it, though. At least you've, at least you've, that, yeah. you've got to admit it. Yeah, well, you, you haven't hid behind anything here. Not at all. You've got on Australia's hottest podcast you, and you told the world. It, no, I knew he fucking won. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> beat Holloway. I knew it. With your own no matter what the internet says, <laughs> I knew it. The internet will never believe that he didn't. Look, yeah. it's, it's wild, isn't it? That was number two. They don't think he won. I could have never said it. No one would ever know. Mm-hmm. You're true. No, but you, I still you admit it to it. You got to talk about it. You know. Do you want to yeah. review today's fights, or are we just going oh, we'll to go through it quickly? Should quickly. We talk yeah. About, yeah. What was your highlight from today? Give it to me. Yeah. What? Well, um, oh, let's do. What, what are the What are the okay. UFC awards? Let's get their version of what the awards are. Like the oh, like performance not, of the night, oh, knockout Aldana. of the night. It's got to be Aldana's fight of the night. Yeah. Yep. Aldana Rosa yeah. fight of the night. Emmett Pat- knockout. Well, let's get to the okay, sorry. fight on the night. Yeah. I okay, mean, I sorry. thought the, the Pantoja fight was, there was a lot of energy. Like, they both fought really well. There it, was was, a, it was a high-level fight. It was an intense five rounds. Like, yep. to be able to go <laughs> that hard for five rounds is deeply, deeply impressive. And I, I would call it runner-up for fight of the night. For sure. And what right. I love about the lower weight classes is, you know, if you're watching a, it might go, a uh, half mount, mount, he's out. But it's fucking half mount, mount, That's north, constant, south, half yeah. mount, full mount, shit, he's flipped him. Yeah. It's full. The other guy's got a full mount. non It's all happening. Yeah. yeah. It's the energy just, on these blokes. Yeah. And there's no chance for anyone to take a breather. Um, yeah, what I loved about that, there's no chance for someone to just relax. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Well, 25 what, minutes yeah. of just... We were doing yeah. the, uh, the the Dabble live stream during that fight, and the yeah. feedback coming through on the live chat with blokes were going, oh, boring fight. Gee whiz, this is no good. But what? we were sitting there going, <laughs> like, who are you people? There's people betting on a first <laughs> round knockout. They don't, they can't don't respect the sport enough. It's people wanting to see fireworks. They just want to see violence. Yeah, yeah it is. But like the, We were it, doing the Dabble live stream and realised it was not live for 17 minutes of the 50 that we were on. That <laughs> oh. I think they cut us off here. Yeah. <laughs> I think they cut us for a Bit, but they go like, oh, you haven't been live, but we're like, no, are we? Technical oh. hit. Anyway, that's okay. We'll, but no, we'll I better. think uh, Aldana, personally for me, yeah. Aldana Rosa, that was a scrap. Yeah. Unbelievable. Those two girls were alpha epic. leather. Absolutely she epic. walked through those the leg yeah. kicks. kicks. Yeah. It was like the, they weren't there, oh. and that's that takes Particularly such in the, you see it so often pain. in the first round, yeah. people get their legs minced up. They don't recover. 
No, nah, she managed to do or it. Or they you start didn't see her limping. doing the no. little gimpy leg. Yeah, yeah. They, or yeah. They, they, they start little, twitching yeah, at the <laughs> at the sight yeah. of a. Right. Did, you did your foot? Yeah. Did your foot rise? I fucking. <laughs> I don't want it again. And she w- refused to Tough. even. She was acting like. Yeah. I don't even have legs. Nah. I'm just here to punch <laughs> you in the head. Yeah. Nah, big no, big respect for that. That's you that was attempting to be legless, right? <laughs> I was. Well, I was she's gone five rounds with Amanda Nunez, so she's clearly how, a pretty tough sort of operator. Yeah. So, Mel, how good would that be if Aldana became the new Aussie slang for legless? Like her legs <laughs> would drop that much. Oh, she yelled, I went out with Nick, where are you? Oh, I'm you are fucking Aldana, Aldana mate. <laughs> I'm Aldana. <laughs> I got Irene. Oh, I got Irene. <laughs> I don't Cody mind Garbrandt that. getting a knockout that's win again. Ooh, great call. Because again, yeah. I was explaining to you. Great call. I didn't say Johnny come lately, but you <laughs> missed the Garbrandt. I think like he did. Garbrandt, I think Dominic he did. Cruz. You've said it Sixteen times now, so you probably did. <laughs> oh, probably not. But, probably but, did. Um, I, I think we were all expecting that Garbrandt wouldn't take it. And well, I mean, there was a, there, there was, was a good chance. There was a good his, chance yeah, that durability. maybe his time was over. Yeah, he's yeah. an annoying was, fighter because he's. He's an attractive man, by the way. Like a, oh, quite he's, a, 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 he's a pretty good-looking fella. Yeah. He's got all Hot the top. capabilities, yeah. he's, but he's got a glass jaw. But then when he does something really good like that right, the first one, then he goes and does this weird, like, point dance, and then but you haven't yeah, finished him cocky. yet. Yeah. He tends to win you but lose you in the same breath. And one, it's, of, one of my favourite, after he lost maybe three or four on the trot, he said, my plan every fight is to go out and fight a certain way and then I get clipped <laughs> and then I start to fight like a dickhead. <laughs> yes. Where he's to, good, his yeah. words and I'm like, Spot that on. is, it's and I love I like that. Like yeah. a Kobe saying yeah. I won. You got Shut to, up. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. You didn't. You didn't. No, I, no. Love, I love a Cody Garbrandt. You no, know, that's I fight good. like a dickhead. I'm yeah. sorry, guys. I don't want to do it. I want to fight spot. like when I beat Dominic Cruz. That was but 25 minutes of all, one of the all-time great performances yeah. ever. Dancing no, it was almost like he sold his soul to the devil that day, just like <laughs> sold his soul for the perfect performance. Yeah. Then, yeah. Give me half up. But then got a glass draw yeah. after. And then you never... can have this perfect performance, yeah. but then for the rest of but, your career you're going to yeah. be very patchy. Every time you get punched, you, you, you'll you fall. I think if you are a coach, if you tell your fighter to go and do something and they get knocked out, They've just been knocked out. So when they wake up, you go, fuck, I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> like, you you're, you're getting there. <laughs> They've just lost that short. <laughs> Coach I've been knocked out a few times, Cash footy fire. and gridiron. I've been knocked out a few times. I don't remember what I was told beforehand. <laughs> I assume Christ. it wasn't running to that bloke's <laughs> knee. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> what were you doing in there? I still remember. Uh, it's gridiron, what I told guy. You to do. Ben, ben Askren. Random. One of my favourite things, Ben Askren. I love funky. Obviously. Loses mm-hmm. to Jorge mm-hmm. Masvidal in the quickest, the flying knee, and he said he woke up in the mm-hmm. ambulance and there was no sweat on him, and he went, <laughs> fuck, that was fast. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, it was yeah, pretty fast. Was pretty fast, <laughs> mate. To know, sure to look mind. at your body the and evi- go, The evidence of, yeah. of what uh, just happened There's none more you. self-aware. We're talking about self-aware. There's none more than Ben Askren. Like, yeah. he, he's actually really good. It's yeah. a game of inches, like though, because he went to t- – like, if that knee was a fraction off, he takes him down and he, he probably just – it's a different story, but it bang, knocked out, no. like no sweat. I think yeah. he wins that fight nine times out of ten, and we just saw the one. That's my personal yeah, well, belief. Yeah. Right. So what are the other awards I know we give out? And what do we think from today? Did we go knock out? We are we, we saying Garbrandt or, or are we saying – Garbrandt or no. Emmett? Josh Emmett. Oh, Josh Emmett. Emmett. <laughs> yeah. The flat earther got and flattened. The flat earther. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. That was yeah. hard to watch. He should have a – you said immediate – Six but I, I love that Bryce got up Six and was chatting months. afterwards. And Did he have his body? You never know. It's always that thing later they always say, I was chatting to everyone in the octagon, but I didn't realise until two days later. I was like, oh, shit, what happened? But he was up, He's moving. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. It's yeah. weird know. that a man can genuinely have like a seizure and then be standing up and be almost able to walk himself out what of it. What are you the- saying? He's faking it? <laughs> yeah, I don't like this. But <laughs> what... <laughs> What? <laughs> we had a what? fake seizure. Just because what it I, makes it feel more full on. Like, he punched me, I'll just do a little just twitch. Rolls. And then they'll go, yeah, no, nah, that's – um, <laughs> That's uncouth. <laughs> what, <laughs> uncouth. <laughs> what I like, he was up and about and talking and – but yeah. UFC and rugby league, so I'm be – I love AFL yeah. and American football but and, and rugby league. But the UFC and the NRL, regardless of knowing what's happened with an injury – We'll still show what happened in slow mo. Yeah, the AFL something will happen. Someone's knees torn. You see it quickly, <laughs> yeah, they don't yeah. go back and they go, and you're like, "What happened?" They go, yeah. "I don't know." We're That's not uh, Harvey Norman ad. <laughs> yeah. But the UFC, like, he's twitching. Yeah, 
if you're wondering in. what, what happened, happened, zoom in. Here it is in slow mo. <laughs> so why Bryce is twitching? Yeah, yeah. Today, the NFL, different angles. God has his yeah. hamstring in the NFL, and they go, "We'll cut to a break." Like he's just yeah. done a hamstring. UFC will zoom in on 4K yeah. and we'll get the yeah. whole thing. And rugby leagues the same. <laughs> Stretch the twitches out. <laughs> yeah, his shins poking out. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> zoom hey, in. It is the wild west. The UFC. It's especially these press conferences recently. It's. But again, we're they're, trying they're, to like, as again, we said, we're trying to like get a good image going forward. But some of the stuff that gets said these days is pretty wild. Still a relatively young sport, and I think that things will evolve over time. I mean, thirty years in terms of the history it of the young. sport yeah. is yeah. young. Um, as a business, it is still growing and evolving, and kind of figuring out what it is going to be. I think that over time we'll see that change and you know there are lots of question marks you know Dana gets asked a lot of questions about why is it that you miss you know a, a, a weight you know a weight class in there yeah. um, for example there are going to be moments where I think things will just continue to click into place and and eventually make more sense to us maybe and maybe. He let, you know, he, maybe. maybe Dana maybe. does <laughs> but Dana does let them he lets them have their Personalities. You want to say that? Yeah. You want to say that? Yeah, so That's fine. Men and women, they can. It's just we've got guys like Strickland and Covington that are just really veering very heavily to but one certain spectrum. Of, of course. And how much of that is theatre? You know, like that that bit where athleticism and sportsmanship, and then like Combined. WWE yeah, it is. theatrics well, kind a of example. merge. Yeah. And yeah. we know that he was on his way out, and we know that to stay, he became this much more divisive character. Mm -hmm. Do we enjoy that? Is it part of why we enjoy watching it is to love to hate certain characters and bring in sort of the old tropes of wrestling into this sport as well? Is it part of just that amalgamation of what makes it fun? Because it isn't at the, it is at the end of the day, entertainment. Sports is entertainment. And you need everything. Yeah. If it's all Covington's, it's boring. Yeah. If it's all Wonder Boys, it's boring. Yeah, true. Yeah, you, you need, need people that. trying you to need, be. Yeah. You need the Volks of the world that just yeah. are so nice yeah. and lovely and beautiful and respectful. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Paddy oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Cornrows Pimlet. That was, that was old Barley that Pimlet. Was <laughs> Straight off a cruise ship. <laughs> He's, it was interesting. Wasn't I it? love it. Yeah, yeah. exactly what that was. Yeah, Seminyak's pimblet. No, nah, <laughs> yeah. it was. It was probably what I expected, to be honest. I didn't think Tony was going to win. He's, he is no. washed. We love Tony. We wanted Tony to win. Everyone was would have been a feel good story. You but cop hate sometimes on here when you he just you doesn't have a it. champion. But like you've got to call it sometimes. Why, so yeah. when someone's not in range, he's doing the fucking sickest moves <laughs> yeah. I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. He's always going for cool moves. So the kid on the PlayStation yeah. mashing buttons. Doing yeah. The yeah. bikes doing yeah. stuff. But yeah. no, when I it comes it, to fighting. I think it's safe to say we all respect, like yes. new and old, you know, we all respect he's him. He's absolutely incredible. My question is, do you think he'll fight again or do you think he might? Well, this he is, shouldn't fight again. He shouldn't. And this is where we want self-awareness. We've talked about it earlier, but he's one of the guys that I don't think has self-awareness. He has such a deep belief in his own talent and ability. He, I don't think he'll ever give up. He keeps talking about but going on a championship he run. He still thinks he's, he's got a championship run in him. Like there's something a little bit wrong with him, which I think you need sometimes as a fighter 100%. to get to that level. But he's sometimes seven now it, and he went to David Goggins. <laughs> I think sometimes it tips over the other way, and that's Tony Ferguson. I think he's. I didn't a understand Goggins. I didn't know much about him. Yeah. I was talking to him about Goggins what? today. I like. I said, we why, must why have does, di- different algorithms. Why does someone run 400 k's? Like, what, like there's Goggins oh, mate, who does you it. You must but then clearly a, have never Googled how do you turn your life around by <laughs> my fat fuck. <laughs> that, all my algorithm is David Goggins going, get up. Get hard. <laughs> You're a bum. Yeah. It's enough. Like, there's enough. A guy, get to a 10 k's and just go and have a beer. And they're all for you. Lifestyle. TikTok, you open it up and it's like, I was running today and an Australian comedian saw me and he's like, David, I'm fat and my name's Nick Cody. <laughs> I don't want to run. And he's like, you should keep running. They're somehow all perfectly made for your life. Stay you know? hard, Nick. Stay hard. Stay hard. So it didn't help, though, did it? Didn't help him. Didn't he never needed him. What do you reckon he got paid, Goggins? I asked he didn't him, need David Would that have been a, a financial job or a, I want to help you job? Surely. Had to be a financial. A bit rogue in universe. A bit bro prey, you <laughs> I know? I don't know. But I just think Tony Ferguson, he doesn't listen to anyone else. Like, yeah. he won't. he won't quit. He should, but he won't. No. I think he oh, could have been a little bit more graceful in his win. Yeah, I'm not sold on him. Loved him when he ate pizza in his post, post-fight yeah. press conference a little while ago, and I love that kind of – he loves food. It's a part of who he is. Yeah. He's not someone who maintains condition all of the yeah. time. Yeah. And I loved that part of him, but seeing him – Throw well, some shade and be who he is at the moment. I'm like, yeah. don't love all of it. I'm no. also yet to see a man turn up with braids who is also gracious. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's no. not. <laughs> no one happen, turns mate. up with barley braids going. I'm Doesn't actually happen. very humble. You <laughs> like, come at Ariel Helwani, who is you know we're yeah. journalists now. So we have got a big oh, shout yeah. out from him. I don't know. It's brethren. Really? So we've got one of the great shout outs. We got a shout out. Four Hawani. days later, Hawani. and he said we heard you on a podcast, but then I thought he's going to stop it there, and then he went. Who the fuck? Uh, and he goes, great to see local boys doing well. And I had nearly crashed my car. I rang it. He's actually just giving us a shout out. Like, I know uh, you were on a podcast earlier yeah. in the week with the who the fuck are these guys. They always boys. say fuck though. They don't know how to say it. Yeah, I actually shit my pants. It was yeah. amazing. It was That's good. But good. no, Paddy come after Ariel and I, I don't respect him for after that. So mm-hmm. he's not my favorite. No. Paddy. What else? The early prelims. I, didn't see the I turned up to the pub and <laughs> Mel let earlies. me know quick sticks that I'd missed. Early early? Some well, bangers. The, oh, the heavyweights went at it. So you went, you got to the pub for the early early. No, so no, I watched, at home. I watched it home. You're a Fight Pass subscriber. I was going to say, I, I love how like, Fight Pass see, there you go. was like more of a sanitised environment yeah, and so got I'm, to the pub for the early. The rear naked the choke submission by Alain Bakov was pretty impressive. I'm going to put my hand in. So oh, yeah, to, yeah, the, uh, the Dagestani. Yes, um, 100%. I mean. That was amazing. You should yep. always fear a Dagestani fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Always. always. Or Trained a, by Khabib's father in the yeah. early days. And, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, he was he's a legit. into the gym by Khabib yeah, wow. to start. So yeah. that was pretty yeah. impressive. You can never write him out. Um, what did you think of the heavyweight? The first fight of the night. That yeah. bloke was on his debut. Yeah, Gaziv. Threw bombs. Terrifying. Yeah, very scary man. He's a. Uh, very fast. Bahrainian. He, no, he, he, Bahrainian. he is. Um, also Dagestani, but fights out of oh, Bahrain. Oh, tricky. Is it classic, like yeah. classic Dagestani Bahraini? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a textbook. That's, a textbook. that's old hat. Yeah. <laughs> and terrifying. Terrifying, yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah, for that's a what I heavyweight. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that one. That yeah. was a good early fight of the night. Um, what it's else? Good. Andre Feely, Touchy oh, Feely. Touchy oh, Feely. Touchy Feely. Feely. Still the best favorite. nickname. Best nickname in sports. Yeah. Like Has to be. Doesn't it? Leaning into it. So sad. He had he had the worst week ever before his win. Did he? 
Yeah, he had to put his dog down before oh, he geez. flew to Vegas for the fight. Get you on the pod everywhere. He had to, a lot more than us. He had, um, <laughs> this might just be who the a fuck young is men- a young podcast. mentor. Like he mentored this guy who died in a motorcycle accident, oh. and he had to bury oh, you know geez, in that week as way. well. Wow, um, lots of different things. So it's like well, that's a good win then. So a good win. Knocked him. him right out. He just sort of said, good. you know, I've had some real low lows and some real high highs, and I think the last fight that he'd fought in the octagon was 2019. So mm. to yeah, see him, home. yeah, Jeez. to see him back was, oh, like that. you know, a he, was, he was just thrilled to be back. Good. Very good. Yeah, good result. Lipsky, Ariane Lipsky, Lipsky. that was a, no, a pretty yeah. good performance uh, yeah. against Casey O'Neill, the yeah. Aussie. Very good. She's in oh, a We love the Aussie, yeah. but we've, all, we've been on, Lip, yeah. we've been on a, Miss Lippy for a while. Bit of a, bit of a slide. Miss Lippy. No, no, well, Casey O'Neill. O'Neill. Yeah, yeah, she's lost two on the trot. Two now. on the trot. She did yeah. her knee, come back, yeah, and now yeah. lost back to back. So she's in a bit of strife, actually. Mm. She's no good for a. We like uh, to stay good. positive for the Aussies, but oh, yeah. of course, always, Lipsky's always. a pretty, fine. pretty tough. Yeah, mm. Lipsky's great. Yeah, it was a good charm. Next year, let's look ahead. What fights are you looking forward to? Obviously, we've got I the mean, Volk coming up. You can't go past that. But Volk de Perrier, yeah. Yeah. for sure. I'm very um, obviously, you know, go Volk. obviously, De Plessis, Strickland. That's good. After today's antics. Just after today's antics, but even before. <laughs> They'll fight you just... over for the Volk fight, and you'll leave after 10 minutes. You go, he'll win. He'll be <laughs> yeah. fine. He'll be He's fine. Going to the bay, yeah, man. I'll meet you at the bar. It'll be yeah. all fine. It'll be good. Yeah, that was a 10 8 round, the first <laughs> one. So I'm, yeah. I'm confident. I'm confident. Who do you reckon the um, Strickland, De Plessis? Mm. Strickland, I reckon. Well, they're just, yeah. I mean, they're both such strange fighters in terms of style that I think it'll be an interesting, it will be an a interesting very matchup. unpredictable matchup to see. I don't, I don't know that I could, the I would want to put just skin comes in the forward, right Constant now. pressure, constantly walking yeah. forward is that unusual style. I think Drykus is going to try and take him down, is yeah. my my opinion. You'll have to try and take him. Oxygen now, though, he has 100% oxygen now, though. He has 100% oxygen now, Drykus. You, you know about that? that? you got the nose... Yeah. So pre Whitaker, he was at like sixty percent capacity. Yeah. Had a nose job, and he's a hundred percent capacity. Had his sinuses fixed yeah. up. Went from no, it was on sixty. He was like twenty five percent oxygen. He was operating on. Wow. That's why wow. every fight you watched him, he looked he like he was gassing, gassing air, couldn't breathe. Yeah. Come out hundred percent oxygen, destroyed Rob Whitaker. So he could be a new mythical wow. fighter. We don't, oh, we don't quite know. Hundred percent discus. They breathing. Hundred percent. out if they can breathe, yeah. they can fight. <laughs> <Does help. laughs> Whoa! Wow. Unlocked. Stop! Stop the press. <laughs> like if you can breathe and you're a fighter, you're, you're half on, a. Let me half just. I'm, I'm still new to this. Let me write it down. <laughs> Right at the end. Notes. Hundred percent oxygen drikers. McGregor <laughs> Chandler <laughs> UFC three hundred. If you can breathe, I love. I love McGregor. I. L- I, I love it. I love it. You want to see? You we'll, want to see Vegas three hundred. We'll lose. I'm so sad. I've, I'm going to go to Vegas. I have to in my life. We are going, aren't we? Yeah, that's we just a we cheers and agree. Yeah. Yeah. Let's all go. I mean, but I'd love to. Cheers? Yeah, we did cheers. I um, we wherever, said. whoever McGregor, let's go. Yeah, we got to go. Whoever McGregor, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just need to find a sponsor that sends us to the mall. Yeah, you've seen a McGregor. We should just all every pay per view we all go. And yeah, <laughs> I think I'm getting greedy. There's, there's something to I don't know. It's like New Year's Eve fireworks. You know, you just got to turn up. Yeah, it's McGregor. It's Connor. It doesn't Let's matter what go. happens. If there's an arena anywhere around the world that you would just love to see mm. a fight, where where in the world would that be? Right. See, this is interesting because fights I think are better in smaller arenas. Yeah, that's mm. what I, uh, you would think. Like one of these big football stadiums in America, or doesn't quite transcend for fights. I don't reckon. So I thought, no, no, I thought I, Perth was because capacity of Perth is not big. big. Twelve, thirteen yeah. thousand. Yeah. But it's that sort was of it's amazing. It was a high, it's a yeah. high Sorry. stadium. And no, 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 no. I was at the Sydney one recently. <laughs> not as close as you, but uh, <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> seats. I went to the. It was meant to be Whitaker. Also, what it ended Costa. up Adesanya Silva oh, in twenty nineteen. Yeah, might have been, and that was or a Gasoline. Rod Laver Arena Gasoline. or something. It was yep, great. Yep, yep, yep. Now Marvel or slash Eddie had I've been to a few times for fights. If you're close, Great. awesome. Yeah. But I was 10 I, rows, it was too far. Yeah. <laughs> I was 10 rows back. I thought, yeah. Sitting on these weird fold out chairs. Like, exactly. Too far, Dad. What yeah. are we going to get to the fourth? Well, yeah. I'd probably yeah. say Madison Square Garden, which yeah. he's been to. I've but been, that is I've the Mecca. I'm at the garden. The I don't know what else I can see. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been to the Volk at the it. garden. You clocked it. Yeah, I have clocked it. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. You should go there, actually. You saw Connor beat Alvarez. And I wasn't going for him, though. That was the problem. Yeah. He was sulking. Was he, he was sulking. No, no sulk. Okay, no sulk. You can't sulk in New York. No, you can't. You've <laughs> been to New York. How many times? I've been to New York maybe about three or four times at this it? point. Amazing. Yes. Well, I would the... I would love to – I've never seen anything at Madison Square Garden okay. before. So, yep. you know, a UFC fight would be pretty pretty yep. epic to see. Yep. Um, 
I'm not a huge Vegas person as a, Come des- on. As a destination, but I would. It's on the bucket list for places to Hot. see a Have fight. you never? Oh, I've you've been, been to Vegas, yeah. What did you like about it? Well, it's it's just not my downtown is great. Like the old yep. part of Fremont Vegas is, is amazing. Yeah. Um, like all now, of the the remnants of the old part of Vegas, I kind of love. But in terms of why I would travel to a place, it just oh, it didn't resonate as much with me. No, but you're spot on there. Great places to eat. I went there for a food festival a couple of years ago, and that was you know they've curated epic, epic chefs to open restaurants yeah. there. So that part of it's great. But I think in terms of seeing a boxing match or a, or a UFC fight, yeah. Vegas has to be yeah. it for me, I think. The strip after a fight is just unbelievable. Yeah. It's so electric. You were the first one out there. Yeah, I know. That's, it was so <laughs> like, good. Oh, was right. like, <laughs> 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 it was real easy to get an right Uber. <laughs> I've got to get to the Cosmo to see my mate show. <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, what did you say? Adult... What was Cirque it? Cirque du Soleil. It's, yeah. it's, got opium. Opium. it's Which unbelievable. When it's you so opium, cool. I think opium. Got opium. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. yeah. I know it sounds sus, it but does opium. It very sus. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was great. Very sus. I missed I I did miss Kobe getting his jaw broken. Oh. Which was a shame. It is a shame. Was it that yeah. was it the Usman fight? Was it the same yeah. event? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was too. So I left at the end of oh, uh, the Holloway yeah. Volk. Yeah. That's very early. It was a it was a big night. Leading into that day, yeah, and then I had to go and see my friend's show. I know that's what I've right. made up with you've the UFCs it, yeah. I've seen. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mate, yeah, you've done more than enough. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. But yeah. Melissa, is there anything people out there should be looking forward to for you coming up? Like, obviously, Dessert Master I think is wrapped up. Yeah, Dessert Master is coming back coming again for season two next yeah. year, which is going to be really exciting. Very. Um, and I'm also doing a show on SBS called The Hospital in the Deep End, which is. Uh, sometime on SBS next year too. So Sorry. please stay tuned. Beautiful. A couple and of other bits and pieces too. By the way, I saw the Little Dessert Fox Masters Tale. final. Ooh, My cameo. wife was watching Little it. And there cameo. was a – someone had made a legitimate birdcage over a cake. It was <sighs> – it's the sad – like talk about knockouts. People getting – like I've seen McGregor snap his leg and I was sad. <laughs> but this – someone had made a birdcage out of chocolate. It yeah. was so – Finicky, and they're putting it over the cake, and it snapped. Oh no! And again, it was McGregor Poirier three. Doctor Stoppage. They sitting there going, "Doctor, Doctor Stoppage." (laughs) Chef's wife's in the end. (laughs) That was a full, you know, standing there going, "Oh my god!" No, that was that was absolutely heartbreaking to watch. Unbelievable. Very much so. Well, Nick, what do you got coming up, mate? Tell the punters what you've got. Uh, I've got a podcast called Mid Flight Brawl. Each week, comedian Luke Heggie and I discuss different air rage incidents. But I've got a new stand up <laughs> special on YouTube now called Nick Cody Live at the Corner Hotel. There you go. Yeah. What a venue, too, just quietly. Ripper. Iconic Melbourne establishment. Mm. Yeah. Good. Ripper Good. pub. Wrap it up, Nick. Well, I'm happy with this. Thanks heaps for coming in, guys. I appreciate it. Hopefully Thanks you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, that you're was not, how good uh, a fight. You're not regretting coming how good's in. How the UFC? How good a fight. So let's be honest. Thank you for having me we on my riff. first UFC podcast. Yes. And amazing. I just remembered we fact, we tried to get the answer, but then we just segued for an hour. Oh. You go two feet at the pub. What, what oh. is it? Yeah, oh. It's one of the longest segues No, that's right. We, that's right. We had the contest about... Uh, I say, I call um, it a palmy. Oh, oh no, yeah. I'm from palmy. Sydney. Yeah, I'm no, not no. oh. cancel. I was going to oh. say, you shared the golden ticket and to be on here anytime. If it's a palmy, <laughs> yeah. this is not getting released now. Yeah. Yeah. We're just I'm so I don't know sorry. who you should listen to, palmy. but look, look at this. <laughs> it's called a palmer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Palmer. I've got the bigger guts. I get to call. <laughs> but I also call them potato scholars, oh, and I know you're going to hate me for that too. How can you build up a level of love and then just. Why did you bring it back? Yeah. Well, shouldn't have done well, we're this. We're going to end on a high. We've ended I, this on a sour You've really Tony you Ferguson the end of this podcast. Have you invitation to uh, come skid. back? <laughs> if there's any consolation, I actually asked the Volk this too the other week and he had the same answers as you. So from New South Wales. You guys have just got no idea what you're doing. Yeah. It's escalope, which is the I know, French, I know it's the this, French it's term this. for that's the way you thinly sliced potato. That's what I was going to say. That's so that's why it's a potato. But you know what? I knew it was a French Minimum background. Minimum a couple of escalopes. As I drink my Delgado's to kill a potato cake. Let's be honest. Great can. Either way, it's battered, it's fried, it's covered <laughs> it's in salt, delicious. and it's great with a drink. 100% agree with that. So let's wrap it up, boys <laughs> yeah. and girls. Thank you very much. Who the fuck is that guy?